We're going to take a look at four identities today. And part of what we're getting out of it, I'm going to try to let you do a little bit of it, but part of what we're getting out of it is, I guess, different strategies that you use in different cases. And it really boils down to there's an art of doing these. And you have to practice a bunch to get used to how they go. I know some people struggle with identities. Go back to your cheat sheet. If you need to, fill it all out. Oop, mine's not filled out. Oh, yeah, mine is filled out. This just isn't the filled out version. So get yours all the way filled out. And all those strategies that I gave you on the first day of this unit, maybe write them out on the back or whatever. Have them handy. And um, keep all those things in mind. Things like common denominators. Things like looking at both sides. So for an example, in this case, one side is a fraction and the other side isn't. So at some point, that has to be resolved. At some point, one of these is either going to become a fraction or one of them will not will become unafraction, right? Uh, and whenever you're solving these, let's say I'm working on the left side, keep glancing back to the right side. Always glance back. Well. Because sometimes you get lost in what you're doing and you forget what you're actually trying to make it look like. And all of a sudden you get a hint when you glance back and it, and it occurs to you. And I mean, sometimes it's true that you start working one direction and it's the wrong direction. So how do you know how to do that? I mean, just keep thinking about it. I guess start the question thinking about all the possible ways that you could solve these and go from there. Um, okay, so let's get started. I think there is maybe, yeah, I think there's one like this where, well, maybe not. One today. Maybe not. Anyway, like you, you'd be surprised what common, finding a common denominator can do. It's pretty amazing how, I mean, it's partly because these are set up to work that way. Like the identities are kind of, that's just how it works out. But you'd be amazed that you have this really big, uh, complicated expression you get common denominators and like it really simplifies it so that's often a good first step it's a really powerful tool I find with these identities so keep that in mind um, and if you take a look here's an here's a good example cosecant of 2 pi 2 sorry 2 theta and on the other side I don't have 2 theta I have theta so again, there's an example of something that at some point needs to be resolved. I can't have two theta on one side and theta on the other side. It's got to be consistent. So either one, one side, like on the right side, I'm going to have to change both those thetas to two thetas somehow or cancel them out or something. Or on the left side, I'm going to have to get rid of that two theta. Right? Like that has to be resolved. So at some point in this process, that's got to happen. All right, so let's get started. So we're actually thinking, what, what would you do? What do you think? This is a little bit different maybe from what you've seen so far. Do you remember the double angles from Friday? We've got three or more double angle formulas. One for sine, a bunch for cos, but, and then for tan. The double angle formulas, do you remember those? If not, maybe look them up in the textbook. I think they're page 417, or maybe the right page right before 416 in your textbook has that has a great summary of all the identities that you should know. I think it's got every single one of them. So like you could copy those straight down onto your cheat sheet or just look at that page. It's got a really good summary of those things. Okay, so what is cosecant? Somebody tell me another way that I can write cosecant. Must be Monday morning. One over sine. And it doesn't matter what the angle is. Cosecant of any angle is the same as one over sine of the same angle. So this is like one over sine of two theta. That's the angle. So I just use the same angle. What would you try in this case? What's your gut tell you? I hope it tells you we should use 
the double angle formula for sine. Like, yes, that is the best thing to do. So if that's what you were wondering, if that's what, what you're asking, I wonder if we're going to do this, yes. And I would say it often, like, while we're doing these lessons, you should always be thinking, what would you do? If you're not confident enough or whatever, you don't want to put your hand up and answer, that's fine. But for yourself, what would you do as a next step? And if it turns out that's correct, make a mental note of that. That your, gut was that your gut was correct. This is what I thought I would do. Because I think a lot of things about identities, people struggle, is because uh, they just hesitate. Like, well, maybe you would do this, but I don't really know, so I'm not going to try it. Right? you got to start somewhere. you got to try it. Okay, so formula is going to be 1 over 2 sine theta cos theta. And this is where like, I glance back at the right side and I say, oh, I'm almost done. I'm going to do this a bit of a long way. You wouldn't have to show this many steps for sure. Like you certainly wouldn't. But just so everybody can follow, um, th this is the same as cosecant times 1 over 2 cos theta. That's something really obvious. But we kind of, some I think, forget about rewriting it that way and the power that it has. So for example... 8 divided by 4 is the same as 8 over 1, so that's like cosecant over 1, times 1 over 4, right? I can rewrite it that way, no problem. So this is 1 over sine theta times 1 over 2 cos theta, which is 1 over 2 sine theta cos theta, which equals the right, I'm oh, sorry, the left side. Done. Everybody good? Yes. Um, so that's like 3 times 4 times 2 is the same as 2 times 3 times 4 is the same as 4 times 2 times 3. It doesn't matter what order you write multiplication in. It's all the same, right? So I just put them all together. And I just wrote it in the same order as the left side so it was perfect. That's the only reason why I did that. The left side said that, right? So I just wrote it in the same order so it was obvious. If you didn't, if you, if you had the right side two cos theta sine theta and you said equals left side, yeah, that's fine. You can't be three steps back from the proof. This is a kind of a, I don't know, math joke or whatever where like, where you get, like somebody would get the first step done and they'd say, and the rest is obvious. <laughs> no, not allowed to do that. You gotta do all the like, like yeah, it might be obvious, but I, I need to know that you could know that. Every, can you imagine on the test, everyone, oh, the answer is obvious. <laughs> Just find a common denominator and then you're done. <laughs> You don't describe. You can actually do it. Okay. So, but uh, if things are inverted like that, then that'd be fine. And then same thing. I said I was going to show you in the long steps. Like you could certainly go from this step all the way to that in one step. I don't need to see those two inside steps. But make sure you understand it before you start doing that stuff like that. All right. Let's try the next one. Anybody recognize this? Sunshine. Anybody recognize this? Yes? Yeah, it's from that first day where we talked about that. This is like um, in, in, if you're looking at a right triangle, you have theta. The other angle is pi by 2 minus theta, right? So if I look back at my cheat sheet, it was... Uh, these ones here, acute angles and right triangles, right? That, that guy right there. So it's asking us to prove this through identities. We, we thought about it with transformations. If I factor that inside part of the sign, I can turn that into like a properly written transformation of the sine curve and show how it's the same as the cosine curve. 
we saw it in triangles. You could look at it uh, on the unit circle and think about it and, and see that it makes sense. Like there's all different ways that we can see that that statement is a true statement, always true. For all values of theta, that is true. Now we're going to prove it with identities. Here's what I want you to do. On the left side, use the compound angle formula for sine to rewrite it. Give it a try. Go. Did we get this? Sine pi by 2 cos theta minus cos pi by 2 sine theta. It's usually a good idea to like evaluate this. You'll see, I think, in the practice probably that once in a while we get questions that have like a number in it, like pi by 2 or something. You do a little bit of work first before you evaluate it often, but in this case, that's it. We'll just we're gonna evaluate it now. Here's a little reminder. I, I don't know if we've quite talked about it like this. So this is how I would evaluate, like we talked about uh, pi by two or pi, how to find those values, they're special cases, right? And I really think the graph is the best way to think about it. So sine goes and then cosine, whoops. Or something like that. That was kind of terrible. But anyway, so here's pi by 2, pi, 3 pi by 2, and then 2 pi. So at pi by 2, yeah, those don't match very well. Sorry, that not there. Right here. At pi by 2, cosine is 0 and sine is 1. If you think about the graph, instead of angles in standard position, that's often easier for that, right? So that's like the first critical point after the starting point. Happens at 90 degrees, 180, 270, 360. Okay, so sine of pi by 2 is 1 times cos theta minus cos of pi by 2, which is 0 times sine theta. And we're done. That's all we're supposed to prove, that it is equal to cos theta. <coughs> that one okay? Cos of x plus y times cos of x minus y equals cos squared x plus cos squared y minus 1. What do you notice about this one? <clears throat> so 
the left side has compound angles and what about the right side? Huh? It, does it have compound angles? No, right? It's not x plus y or anything. It's just x and just y. So again, that's got to be resolved. How do you? How would you imagine getting rid of the compound angles using those formulas, right? Anybody notice anything else that might be relevant? Like anything, observations can't be wrong. Vivian. The left side Ooh. Nice, yeah, x plus y, x minus y, is that the part that you mean? Yeah. yeah. Anything else? What about the one on the right? Like, there's a one there. I don't know, where did that come from? It's gotta come from somewhere, so maybe we're not worried about it right now, but at some point it's gotta come from somewhere. Anyway, uh, what's your gut telling you? If it's telling you you have to use the compound angles for the left side, then I think you're probably right. I think this is one of those cases where you're kind of diving in head first, not really sure how deep it is. So like you can't see how this is gonna resolve and it's, we're gonna have a big statement for the left side in the, in the first couple of lines and then all of a sudden it's gonna go whoop and things are gonna kinda take care of themselves. So give that a try. So try to write cos of x plus y and cos of x minus y using the formulas. And you should have them written multiplied together like that. So cos of x plus y is cos x cos y minus sine x sine y. And then same thing for cos of x minus y. And here's where like, yikes, how is that going to be? The right side. Well, we just have to keep going. Like this is where you just have to kind of have a little bit of faith and sort of push through it. So we're going to do something like this. This times this, this times this, this times this, this times this. So cos x cos y times cos x cos y is cos squared x cos squared y. And then, like Vivian said, this is like a difference of squares. So the middle term cancels. I'm not going to write it. It's going to take too much. It would take up the entire page. But when I do cos x cos y times positive sine x sine y, cos x cos y times negative sine x sine y, they're going to be the same thing but opposite signs will cancel. And then minus sine squared x sine squared, whoops. Sine squared y.
What do you think is next? Yes? Um, I think using the like, identity to help in uh, signs and the, the ones on the right there. Is that what you mean? Yeah. The sign squared x and the sign squared y? Why? What made you think that, Vivian? <laughs> really? Yeah, that's a great idea. Anybody have another reason? Like, again, if I look at the left side, I've got coses and sines, but the right side only has coses. Kind of interesting. Okay, so let's give that a try. Equals cos squared x, cos squared y minus. So how do I rewrite those? Vivian, what do you think? Anybody? Yeah? Like sine squared, squared theta equals 1 minus cos squared theta? Okay, nice. And sine squared y, same thing. I'm going to run out of space here. Cos squared x cos squared y minus, I'm just going to keep that minus there. 1 times 1 is 1. And then that's going to be uh, minus cos squared y minus cos squared x plus cos squared x cos squared y. And then I would say at this stage, maybe, and maybe not even yet, but maybe you start to see how this is going to work out. And that's only actually, I guess, four steps, but still, I don't know, sometimes to me it feels like you kind of, okay, like it seemed pretty obvious what to do in the first step. And then you, you do it, and you don't really, you're like, uh, I'm not really sure how this is helping. So you go shot in the dark. Well, I could change those sine squareds to cos squareds. And you're like, ooh, I still don't really see how this is going to work out. And then all of a sudden, like, keep going. Just because you don't see it yet doesn't mean it's wrong. I, what I'm trying to say, keep, I would say keep going through. So if you don't see it yet, this is going to equal, I guess I'll do this the long way, cos squared y minus 1 plus cos squared y plus cos squared x minus cos squared x cos squared y. And then take a look. Cos squared x cos squared y minus cos squared x cos squared y. And I've got cos squared y plus cos squared x minus 1, which is the right side. So again, I think people have these questions like, how, like remember when we did those, uh, we did the derivations of the different formulas, and some of them were, were, were okay, but some of them were like, how in the world would you know to do that? Like, how would I know to multiply by 1 over cos squared x times cos squared y or whatever, right? Well, that's fair. So people ask the same questions here. How would I know to do that? But again, 
it's not that crazy when you think this only has cosines, this one has cosines and sines, so I've got to figure out a way to get rid of those sines. So think about which identity you could use to do that. All right, one more. Whenever I have a secant or a cosecant, I always just like a one on its own. I always like to rewrite that. Otherwise, I'll just, because I'm going to do most of the work on the left side. Otherwise, I'm going to end up on the left side. At the end, I'm going to get one over cos, and I'm just going to say equal secant, like one way or the other. It's the same thing. But that way, you know you're working to one over cos kind of thing. So what do we start here? This is a bit more of a straightforward one. No, no. Compound angles, no double angles. A bit more straightforward. Help. Nice. So sine theta over cosine theta. And what would be my next step? Yeah, so in other words, common denominator. So that's sine theta minus cos theta over cos theta over sine theta minus cos theta over 1, right? Which is sine theta minus cos theta over cos theta times 1 over sine theta minus cos theta, gone. And done. So those strategies are good strategies. Use them, go with them, have some faith in them. Go with your gut. Sometimes it's nice to have some scrap paper. Like even, like I do that for sure when I'm solving these. I've got like the paper that I'm working on. But if I'm ever unsure, I start scribbling on scrap paper, see where it's gonna go. You can always erase and stuff too, but you know, it's a, this, if you do it on scrap paper, then you don't have to erase it. You can you always have that work in case you want to look back at it or anything, right? Um, and always keep an eye on the other side. Think about what's on the other side that's missing on the side you're working on and vice versa. What's the same about them? What's different about them? Any questions? Okay, very quickly, there's a couple of questions in the practice, I think, that does this kind of a thing. Prove that the following is not an identity. So if this was an equation, sine 3 theta equals 3 sine theta cos theta, that would be like find the values of theta where it's true. Right? That's an equation. We're going to do some of those later on this week solving trig equations. Like, like a linear equation, 2x equals 10. Find the value of x where it's true. How is that different from an identity? Identities are true everywhere. If you tried to solve them without doing left side, right side, 
you'd end up with like five equals five or, or theta equals theta, right? You'd, you'd end up with something equals itself. That's the whole point. This reminds me of a great time when you do linear systems and you get infinite answers because it's the same line. You get this weird thing where it's like 10 equals 10. You're like, what? What's going on? Okay. Um, but, so this may be true for some values of theta, but it's not true for all values of theta. So it's not an identity. So how do we prove that it's not an identity? Once you've done this once, it becomes kind of easy, but you've got to know what to do. Yep. You could. Yep. Anybody have another idea? When you're trying to prove something isn't true for all values of theta, all you got to do is find one that it's not true for. So pick one and try it. Try pi. You could try zero, I guess, but that might be tricky because sometimes like zero or pi or one or whatever, like sometimes they're, they're equal on that, things work out. So what should we try? Theta. Should we try, and pi, pi by four is a tricky one because sine and cos are the same there. So that's probably a bad idea. But how about pi by two? They're very different at pi by two. One of them is one, one of them is zero. So sine of three pi by two. What's the sine of three pi by two? Using the graph. Negative one. And the right side is three sine pi by two cos pi by two, which is three. The sine of pi by two is? One. Cos pi by two, zero, zero, done. Left side not equal right side, therefore that is not an identity. Why do you think we did this version? Because sine 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cos theta, and people start to think, oh, maybe it's true for every number. Sine 10 theta equals 10 sine theta cos theta, but it's not. Not true. All right, any questions?